Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we'll go ahead and open the floor to you guys. Uh, <coughs> questions for Coach Sullivan as Arizona prepares for its trip to Houston. After watching the film, what did you notice from last week's game? We mean notice. Or what were your, just some of the biggest takeaways? That well, I, I think, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of things that, that uh, we can do better as, as coaches. Um, we're not going to make excuses about anything. Um, you know, it just um, – we, we're going to continue to get better and put our players in, in position, in better position to be successful. And, you know, you get down to the end and it's a one score game. And, um, you know, the takeaways were for we ran 42 plays in the first half and only had 10 points to show for it. Um, and so the efficiency of those plays, the efficiency of the offense needs to get better. And conversely, we ran 11 plays in the third quarter. To their 22. So um, everything works hand in hand. And, um, you know, sometimes that's field position that's dictated by special teams. But obviously, um, you know, the third quarter was, was an issue. You, you get back to um, the first half and not having enough points in 42 plays. Um, the fourth quarter, you know, and scoring 14 points in, in the fourth quarter or, or 13, whatever it was. Um, in the third quarter was um, was the game, and and uh, so you know to fix those issues, it's not offense and defense, it's special teams. You know, third quarter was a team uh, effort for special for you know we give up the punt return, we give up uh, some other things. We don't do things from a field position standpoint. They drive the ball. Um, we've got eleven plays. We've got a couple three and outs. So as a team in the third quarter, you know, that, that's that's how we lost the game. And we've got to be more consistent, um, you know, for four quarters. Then those and, – and if you're running 42 plays in, in the first half, you know, and have 10 points, that's uh, that's not the efficiency that you need. Kevin, obviously there was a lot of excitement about, you know, you arriving here and the start of this, this era with you. But there was a large faction of the fan base that came away befuddled with the offensive game plan and thought that you guys didn't properly use Khalil Tate's uh, skill set and his best skill set, which is running the football. How do you answer that fact well, of the fan base? I, I think uh, it's it's what I just talked about right right there. I think um, you know our efficiency needs to be better, and um, you know we, we what we have to do is play to our, our team's strengths more so offensively. Um, I, I would say too, it's it's not just uh, it was not just Khalil. I think, you know, going back and look at, at, at for Shun Brown to have one touch, uh, that's not okay either. So, um, you know, it's it's about not so much about plays, it's it's players and, and putting them in the right position for us to be successful. Uh, and uh, we've, we've got to do a better job of that. How did you assess Khalil's comfort level as the game progressed? Well, you know, it was... Uh, as the game progressed, I thought uh, you know he did a, a, a nice job. You know, the, you know, we get you, you look at the number of pass attempts. You know, really, we were only ahead in that game for what two minutes, right before the half, right. So um, you know, the, we get behind in, in the third quarter, and, and because of the number of possessions that you're going to have in, in you know late in the third and in the fourth quarter, and knowing that that. Uh, you know, we have to throw it to get back in the game. Um, I thought he handled that very well. And I thought in the fourth quarter, um, when we were really the third quarter, when we our, our guys could have just um, gone the other way, um, the, the, the biggest takeaway is that uh, as a team, um, these guys kept playing. And, and, you know, when you're a quarterback in that situation where everybody knows you got to throw it to get back in it, I thought he did a, a, a really good job of staying poised um, and finding people and, and getting us back in the game. You know, you're, you're um, to get it back to a one-score game with three minutes and something to go when in the middle of the third quarter, late in the third quarter, um, we were really out of it. So from a leadership standpoint and from a poise standpoint, I thought he did a nice job. Something you can do week to week this week to battle the. You know, there's a lot of defensive players that are starting to cramp up a little bit in the second half. There's something you can do. Yeah, yeah. We talked. We've talked about that yesterday. 
So um, there's there's a lot of things we can do. We can have a better rotation. Number one, um, we had guys that playing seventy some snaps yesterday or Saturday night. Um, we have to have confidence in, in some guys in the rotation, and uh, so you know that that uh, and like I talked about Saturday night, you know the, the, the hydration piece is is uh, is critical. But we also have to be able to manage that as coaches and, and have confidence and and the other guys that are behind them to, to get them in the game and, and have a, a solid rotation. Is it fair to say that you and Noel are still kind of trying to figure out the best balance with Khalil as far as running? Passing? Yeah, I think I think it was, it's not just me and Noel and with Khalil. I think it's our, our team. And, um, you know, we, we know a lot more. Like I said last week, you know, we'll know a lot more at midnight Saturday night than I knew last Monday. We do know a lot more. And because of that, as we get together today and meet as a team, but we've met as coaches yesterday and today, uh, we've got a lot better feel for you know what we can do, uh, you know where where we're gonna go with what we're doing offensively, and, and uh, um, you know unfortunately that uh, <laughs> CO Saturday night was was uh, was was not uh, what we wanted, and uh, you know it's but. You know, in 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 football, just like any other sport, just like in life. All right, you learn from it. It's and now. What are you going to do? And uh, you know, we've, we've had those meetings, and and that's going to be communicated to our team today. What was your takeaway from the performances of the four new offensive linemen? Well, yeah, it's uh, you know, you, you had four first-time starters. You know, I really didn't even think about that going into the game because we've been that's who we have right now. Um, you know, it's uh, when you have four first-time guys in there. It's uh, there were some good things and there's some bad things. You know, um, it, it, in the beginning and, and some pressures, but uh, you know, I think the, the the positive is is how they handled the fourth quarter. Um, and you know, you you look at this game and, and as I said before, you know, you 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 run 42 plays in the in the first half. It, it, basically, you, you you have ten points, which that efficiency is is not what you want. But the other side of the coin is, for a first football game to have zero turnovers, and only four penalties. I thought that was, uh, you know, that's that's mid season, and you know, unfortunately, we we didn't get any takeaways, but uh, but uh, zero penalties and and and. Four, uh, I mean, zero turnovers and four penalties out of a, a whole team unit was was pretty good by the football team. And a lot of that happens when you have four new starters, you have different guys on the field. Um, I thought the operation piece was was uh, uh, was was very good. Now the execution piece is something we still have to get better at. When you have young linemen and, and you have a number of missed blocks, how much is that is anxiousness? How much of that is them just not? Focusing on what their technique should be. I think it's uh, a little bit of everything. You know, when you have new new guys um, against an experienced defense like that too, with with a lot of moving parts, um, you know, that's that's what it is. But that's that's what we practice. You know, and and it's like uh, it's like I told somebody yesterday. You know, I can't call Herm or Chip and trade guys. You know, those those are our guys. And so, you know, it's college football. We're, it's not like we're going we're gonna to get somebody else at this point, and we've got to coach them. And, and, and also, you know, we've got to do things as coaches to give our guys the best chance to be successful. What about the, um, the defensive line? What did you see from them, and what can they do better? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's a situation where, you know, just like I just talked about, you know, we, we've, we've got to continue to develop the too deep. And, and a rotation in there that we feel good about. I think you saw some young guys get in there and, and play. Um, you know, it's it's disappointing that we didn't have any sacks. Um, but the other piece is, is you know, that uh, um, that rotation and what they can do is one thing. You know, what's the production level of those guys? And then, you know, the 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 the, uh, the Kind of the deceiving thing is, all right, what's the production of the D line as far as tackles? All right, 
that's one thing. But, you know, for what we're doing, um, the production of, of Tony Fields and, and Colin Schooler um, plays off of that it, with, with, with what we're doing on defense with our front. And so to keep those guys off of them um, is a big deal. And so do we want more production? Yes, um, out of the front. But, um, you know, that's, that's, that's the other piece, just because there's not that much production and you have a, a, a Mike linebacker making, what, 17 tackles, right? He's, there's not a whole lot of people getting to him to make 17 tackles in, in, in a game like that. And, and there's a reason for that. But, yeah, we, we, we'd like more production out of the front. In terms of the defense, it seemed like there were times when you know, there was trouble identifying running backs and tight ends coming out on pass patterns, whether that was a linebacker responsibility or safety responsibility. How can in the flat, be yeah. How can you be better in that yeah, area? we can be better. We can be better in that area. You know, we, we had um, another injury um, in, the, in the third quarter that, and, and um, you know, had to, because of where we are with, with our, our depth, um, we had a freshman in there too on, on two of those occasions in the flat playing the spur and safety uh, and you know it, it's, uh, with, with all the shift trade motion things that, that were going on you know it's just he, he got a little lost but um, you know we, we've got to be able to, to, to handle that and you know I, I think that uh, as I said you know we, we've, we've got to put our guys in, in position to be successful um and that that's been our discussion over the last 48 hours. How do you prepare your young offensive line to go up against such a special talent in Ed Oliver? Yeah, well, he's a, he's a great player, not a good player, a great player. So, you know, we we played some pretty good players last week too. Uh, I think you'll you'll see two of those guys that, uh, um, or at least two in in that front last week or, or NFL guys and uh you know Taki Taki is 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 as good a linebacker as you're gonna play. Ed Oliver is a, a very, very special athlete and a one of the best players in the country. Um so we as again, you know, we've we've we, you can't ignore his talents. Um he he's done it against everybody. And uh, you know, as uh, as the coaching staff, we got to put our guys in the best position to to be successful. What do you like most about Oliver? Everything, <laughs> everything. That's why we tried to recruit him at the last place. You know, he's he's uh, he's powerful. He's big. He's quick. Um, he's got great demeanor. Um, so you know, he, he's uh, he's a special talent, and uh, he's a, he's a handful. You know, uh, that's an interesting question. There, there are a lot of them. You know, we, I was uh, I, right after our first game, we had the hurricane hit, and we had to move to Dallas. And uh, you know, I, as a matter of fact, I just got uh, last week. I just got uh, Case Keenum sent me a copy of his book, and uh, you know, the, the whole relationship piece with with the people there and. Uh, and and the president, Dr. Couture, and just everything about it was, you know, it's a, your first time head coach. So there are a lot of things that are memorable, um, that uh, a lot of great people in the city, uh, a lot of friends that are still there. Um, so it's it's not just one, but uh, there, there are a lot of things that happened in four years that uh, with players, with administrators, with uh, with people in the, in the city that... Uh, are, 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 are very memorable. So it'll be, it'll be my first time back in, in that stadium. Um, that stadium was not there when I was there, so it's, it's something that I've passed by and, you know, in recruiting or being in Houston. So it'll be, it'll be, it'll be uh, great to get back. Do you feel any extra excitement going to coach your first game back at your... No, I mean, it's, it's, it, it, if you're in this business, as long as I've been in it, you know, it's it's like uh, you know I was at Minnesota for five years in the Big Ten, and we had to go to Purdue to play. Where I, you know, in the same stadium or in you know same places, and uh, and then you know turn around and leave Minnesota. I go to Purdue, and you know I was at Minnesota for five years. So we're playing the same deal. And you know, if you're in this long enough, 
and I've been at A and M playing against Oklahoma, been at Oklahoma playing against A and M. You know, you got if you're lucky enough to be around this business long enough, you know, you're, you've got friends, you've got places that that you've played, and um, and you know, it's that's that's football and that's college football, and so the passion for the game is is the same regardless. You know, you've got 12 opportunities that you're guaranteed every year. And um, for us, this will be opportunity number two. And, and um, the excitement level for for one, two, three, four, five is going to be the same. When you were looking at the kick return position, what was attractive about putting J.J. there? Um, his explosiveness. I think what you saw in the second half, once we got him going, he's like he got real close to 100 yards again. You know, but with running the ball, um, you know, he's got um, a unique ability to make people miss. Um, and, and for his size, you know, he's got real power, you know. And, and so, you know, he's explosive. Um, he's got everything you want in a, in a return guy, uh, particularly kickoff return. And, and um, he wants to do it. And that's that's a big part of it because it's not for everybody, you know. You you you're going as fast as you can down the field, and they are going as fast as they can. And there's some violent collisions in that in that deals. But you, the biggest part of that is he's got the ability and the want to, and and uh, I think he's he's going to be dynamic at it. That said, with the way that they're downgrading the kick return aspect of the game in the NFL, how much do you worry that your top running back is, is having to... Is and we've always, you know, no matter where it's been, you know, the the idea is to um, to be as successful at all phases as you can. And, and you know, it's, it's no different than worrying about him being, handing the ball to him in, in the backfield. Um, so... You know, what you're trying to do, what you want to do, is give your team the best chance to be successful um, in all phases. And when, which means that you want your best players out there. And particularly guys that want to do it, and, and, and he wants to do it, and he's, he's good at it. So that gives us an opportunity for field position and or points with him back there. Do you think you guys missed Jace Whitaker's leadership um, on Saturday, and do you think he'll be back this week? Um, I, th I think without a doubt, you know, he's, uh, he, he is, it gets back to the other piece, right? There's, there's, that's the depth that we need. And it's not just the leadership because he's a, he's a really, really fine football player, but it's also the depth that, that he brings to the position and the ability to rotate some people and, and his experience. Um, so, you know, we, we've, we, I would look for him. To, to probably be back this week, um, you know, and then we we also have a situation at, at safety or spur that, you know, we're, we could, because of the, sus the suspension last uh, of of players that uh, brought us to a depth issue last, last weekend. So, you know, if we can get those two guys back this week, you know, that, that certainly will help us defensively because of not, not just their leadership, their experience, Right, and their talent level, and and building depth there. Marcel, Marcel, said, more questions. Marcel said he told you that uh, Scotty Young was a playmaker. What have been your impressions of him now that you've had a couple of weeks to see him? I agree. He's a playmaker. And so, you know, and some of the things that you were talking about that uh, um, happened Saturday night might be different. But you can't, you know, you can't look back at that. He wasn't going to play. Um, we got other guys ready to go, but uh, to your both your guys' points to your questions, you know those guys add experience and depth. It's not just depth, but they've played in in real ball games and understand. Particularly going on the first road game with with a lot of these young guys, these guys have been there, done it, and uh, I think from that standpoint. Um, to both of you guys' questions, I think it's it's not just um, depth, but ex experience, and with that comes the leadership piece that, that you ask about. The, the players who were hurt were not in uniform, were not on the sideline right. for the game. Where were they? In the stands. In the stands. Yeah. Have you always done yeah. it, or yeah. what is the kind of the reason behind it? Because there's, there's a lot going on on the sideline, and, um, you know, it's, uh, we've got 110 players, you know, and, and 
um, we've got a, a travel squad and a dress squad. And so, you know, when you travel with 70 guys, you know, on the road, um, you know, it's, it's nobody asks about that when you, when you, when you travel, right? And, and the home games are just for efficiency's sake to be able to communicate, um, you know, 40 more guys on the sidelines, a lot of guys. And, you know, there's particularly with, there's not a lot of room down there, too. So um, our, our ability to be able to, to communicate with, with players and, and have the guys that are ready, um, basically the, there's a little bit, there's a little more at home but then on the road, but not, not many more. On the, for the road game this week? 70. 70 players in dress? Yeah. When you coached at Houston, did you consider it an advantage to play a day game in the Houston? Um, you know, I don't know. I, it's, uh, you know, this time of year, it's, it's, it's not as much the heat, it's humidity. But, uh, you know, when I was there, we played at all different times. You know, we played at <laughs> 11, we played at, I think we had a kickoff with Texas Tech at 9.30 one night. You know, on a, was that? It might have been a Friday or Saturday. So, you know, it's it's one of those things that uh, you know we were whenever you know television dictated the the kick time, and uh, just like a lot of places, once you get a program going, then television's going to dictate that. It's going to be hot, you know, no matter what. It's like it's like it's warm here. So, um, you know, the it. it uh, uh, it's it's just the way things are right now in in, in college football. You know, you're, you're, when you're playing um, 7:45 our time, and which was 9:45 their time, we kick off, and then we're kicking it off at at uh, 11, which is nine o'clock our time. So, you know, that's that's going to be that's part of what you do, and to be able to adjust and plan for that is is part of what we do. All right. Thank you.